Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with a new product. So let's get creative and let's play with this. I was contacted by this organization, and it is called Viviva, I believe, or it could be Viviva. Um, these are color sheets, watercolor color sheets. Um, they they are very uh, similar to the Peerless watercolors on the cardstock. That's what these are. So when you place your order, this is what the packaging will look like. I think it's really pretty. It actually looks like watercolor. Um, love the deep colors of it. This is the package here. Now what's great is this is very portable. There are a total of 16 colors when it comes to this. You will take off your plastic paper. Now there is a cord that's on this and of course I cut through it. Yay me. Um, but it's a way to carry this. This fits very nicely um, for women in their purse um, with a watercolor pen. So you can actually paint on the go and have a little watercolor pad um, to paint with. Um, when you lift up the cover, um, you do have instructions that are there. And I will show you that momentarily. I do apologize again. A um, little bit long video, but I want to make sure I just wanted to play and create with it. I'm getting all my supplies ready, such as my water. I'm going to use my Dick Blick uh, watercolor block, and this is my cold press. I'm also going to pull in a new product by Arteza, or Arteza, I believe I say it wrong. Um, and it's the new postcards that they came out with. I wanted to give those a try. So I'm just gathering up my brushes um and so forth just to play i want to see how these colors are how they work um so you can see you can put your name on the inside you've got instructions um on that page on what what pieces are in there okay there's a plastic sheet that sits between each of the color pages this is a nice size. While this doesn't look like there's a lot of pigment, you would be very surprised at how much pigment is actually on each of these pages. Um, these are really nice to work with. Now, I do highly recommend to swatch. Swatch your colors. Now, you can do this underneath the blocks of pigment. And I'll be showing you that. So you can have a dark side and a light side. It's not like you have your normal type when we create our color charts. You know, we have this huge area where we can have that. But you can at least show the differences between the two. Now, the nice part, too, because um, after I was playing with it, you know, again, you have that plastic sheet that is sitting in between these colors. So... If this is still wet and you close it, that color is going to go on that plastic sheet. So it serves a dual purpose. One, it stops the mixing of the two colors. But what it also does is you can pick that color up from that. So it's saving your pigment, which is awesome. In the back of this, we can add a small palette. So there is a piece of paper that's folded over. You can remove the adhesive tape uh, covering, and we're going to place that right down in the area that they clearly identify for you. This is a small palette, so it's actually coated, um, so it's a slick surface, but you can actually use that as a palette with your colors as you, fl as you pull down your pages. Um, I think ingenious, absolutely ingenious. Um, truly, the concept of portable is what this product is. I, I love gadgets like this and the ideas that people come up with um, to be able to create. I think it is really cool. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dip my brush right into the, the little bit, cor the small corner there. And you can see just how small that area is. Um, I'm using the palette. You can see how it beads up, added a little bit of water, and now I'm going to go to the other side. What I like with the 16 colors that we have here is the color families are hit. 
you've got your cool, you've got your warm shades of each of the colors. Um, you got your reds to your grays. So you got your reds, your orange, your yellows, your browns, your greens, your blues, your purples, and a gray. All the colors that you need. These mix beautifully. And again, you'll see that there's actually a project that I will work on that I pulled in here. Um, very bright, vibrant in the colors. And again, it's, it does take, while it doesn't look like you have a lot of pigment, there is a lot of pigment there. Now, what you need to understand and maybe get used to, you know, but I think that's with all watercolors. Again, some of these colors, when you look at the purples or, or anything like that, like the violet, it's got a gold shimmer to it. It's violet. It is purple. So just, you want to definitely swatch these so that you can see the colors. The tab colors at the bottom will give you an idea of what it looks like. So here, I'm just playing with brush strokes. When I first get watercolors or mediums, I play with them. I just play around with the strokes, see what I can do, see how vibrant those colors are. Especially with watercolors, I want to see how far that color is going to push back when it dries. This is something I always love to see. It's, it's mesmerizing to me. Do they move? If these are watercolors, they should move in in a puddle of water. Um, I want to see how that works. Now, the reason why my strokes are looking the way that they are is because I'm not using a large enough brush. And there we go. It, it got a little bit better. I was putting too much pressure on that small brush to try to get that huge, that huge line there. So they have wonderful movement in water. They blend beautifully uh, between each other. Um, I, I'm very interested in these to keep moving on. Again, the portability is wonderful. Again, they thought about that palette. They thought about your color chart so that you know what these colors are. They've built that all in. They've built in the plastic sheets. So when you close this, because again, you could be sitting somewhere just doing a neat little tiny sketch and then all of a sudden, oh, I got to move. Well, you've got to close it up. Um, they have thought of that. So I do, do, do really um, enjoy that. Again, just playing to see what this does, how this works. Um, I am, I know that I do not have um, enough water in my brush. And if you heard that sound, I apologize. That would be my cat jumping up onto my table here as I'm doing my voiceover. He loves his window. So he must get to that. Um, so I'm just playing with the brush strokes, you know, how they fade out, how they move. Can I, after they dry, can I move them again? Um, how do, on paper, how do the two colors come together? Um, and so forth. And that's really what I'm doing here, getting a feel for what all of this does. Um, and this I usually do just for a little bit. And then at some point I just dive right in. So you can see now when I close this, I had it still wet. I pushed it. It did go onto the, um, the swatch area. Not a problem. I kept that one dark and I put the light color on the other side. You know, again, we adapt. We absolutely adapt. <coughs> Excuse me. So just keep an eye. I mean, that's the only thing that I would say keep watch out for are those plastic sheets because they are like a wax material. But what is great, they the color does dry on them. Um, and that color can be lifted up with your paintbrush or your watercolor brush, whichever you are using. Here I'm seeing how that plastic does clean up. Is it worth it to do that? Absolutely not. And here's why. You're going to forget that pigment is on your rag. And when you go to wipe your hand, it's going to get all over your hand. Ask me how I know. Yes. I don't think I ever washed my hands so much during a video in my life. <laughs> <laughs> 
But these are really, really fun. Here, I just always love to watch the movement of the colors when you just place a drop. And just to see that move, see it spiral out, to see it reach out, um, I think is absolutely beautiful. I do look at these as well to make sure, again, do look at how they dried. How far back do they go back in color? It's not much. They do hold on to the vibrancy. Um, and they do level themselves out in some cases. Those are the cards that I'm, that I just showed for the Arteza. They are the postcards. They are rounded corners. They also now have watercolor cards, which is awesome. And those I'll be showing in a later video. That's the stamp set that I'm going to be using by Simon Says. Some beautiful sunflower images. And I'm just going to set down my postcard. And I'm going to position it. I wanted to at least have three, because again, I do everything in threes, um, to make sure that I would have those images on my postcard. Almost stamped it on the wrong side. But it's not like you can't stamp it on that side, too. Again, I will be showing these, the paper products, the postcards, and the watercolor, watercolor cards in another video very shortly. So I'm going to be using, excuse me, I want to make sure that I'm using a watercolor, um, a waterproof ink. Um, and the ink that I'm going to use is my Simon Says Stamp Intense Ink. Now, I like this ink. Again, I, gotta, I want to make sure that it dries, which I will do. Um, but I do like this ink because it reacts. Like when I've used the Barely Beige um, or the, uh, the fog that those light colors, they do, uh, they have a mini reaction almost when it comes to watercolors and I kind of like it. So that's why I use that. You can see that this filled up the entire image beautifully. And now I am just going to have fun coloring in this image, this image using these colors. So uh, you're going to see some mixing. You're going to see um, all kinds of different things. I do have a plastic palette off to the right. Um, that is my Arteza, uh, the small palette. I do like to pull up my color, put it down on the palette so that I can add more water to it. I'm doing a dry to wet technique here, meaning my paper is drying and I'm putting my wet colors onto it. And I'm adding water as I go to pull that through. Once I have that done, it, while it's still damp, um, I'm going to add the darker shades along the edge. And this is going to continue to move as it dries. Now remember, I just stamped the image. I did not... Um, emboss the image. So I don't have any barriers here. So you want to keep that... Be aware of that so that as we do this, you, you're not working close. You're not working next to each other in your areas. You, and if you do, you want to make sure that they're drying. You can see that I added some black into that brown that I made or rust color to make it a little bit darker. I'm also adding some magenta to that black mix. Again, just to give it a different shade in there. When it comes to the coloring that I'm doing or the painting that I'm doing here, I'm not being neat. I want this to look very sketchy, very, and here are my technical terms, watercolory. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't want to have those straight lines. I don't want to have, I want it to look like it's flowing. After I laid down that one color, I'm now coming in with a darker shade and I'm just letting that move through the paper and through the watercolor. And while it may look like it's a harsh line, it looks beautiful when it does even itself out. It continues to move. When you allow it to dry by itself, I have no patience. But for something like this, I try to gain some patience, which is very difficult. <laughs> Come on, raise your hand. You, you know you're there. Um, when you put 
When you go to dry this image, if I would constantly use my heat tool, it stops the movement. It stops the movement of the damp paper, the fibers gathering up that pigment. It stops it because you're drying it immediately. If you allow all of this to dry, okay, it'll continue to move on its own. So it actually kind of will level itself out. Um, even itself out, but you'll still see your shadows. You'll still see your dark places where you want to make it look round like I'm doing to these centers. So again, that's my tip. That's what I find. I never will profess myself to be a watercolorist because I am not. I enjoy playing, and that's the premise of this tool too. However, it is for all levels of creators and watercolorists. Absolutely. It is for the beginner to the expert, um, by all means. They're fun. They're convenient. Um, sometimes, you know, when we're sitting somewhere waiting, we just want to be able to create, and this allows for that, which is wonderful. I love the mixing of these colors, and again, I'm sticking with colors that I already used. The, I, yeah, I know that doesn't make sense. So I'm limiting myself to the colors. So I know I used the magenta. I know I used the black. I know I used, <clears throat> excuse me, the dusk orange, the vermilion, the chrome yellow, the gold ochre, the burnt umber, and the burnt sienna those colors I know I used. So I'm sticking with those. I'm just creating different levels of those colors and mixing these together. Do I know if they're supposed to be mixed together? Absolutely not. But they look good. And I enjoyed this. I was really having a lot of fun with this piece because each of the leaves were different on each of the sunflowers. So each one stood out. The centers for each of the sunflowers were different. I will show the, those two leaves that are really sticking out there, but I kept those other two that are far in the background with just the stamped image. So I kept it monochrome. So these three, you know, my whole process of groupings of three. Um, I know I, I usually it's, we always like even numbers. I love odd numbers. Um, they're more appealing when it comes to my card making to my eye. Um, but again, to each his own. I just love the fact that those three down in that corner were, were sticking up. And remember, this is a postcard. All right. So, you know, we don't want to add embellishments. We don't want to add <laughs> all of those things unless we're putting it in an envelope or maybe a clear package, which I know we couldn't do. I mean, by all means. But again, um, it was a lot of fun with that. So I do, even though this video is sped up, you can see those moments where there's nothing going on and I'm able to catch up in my gabbing here. Um, but that is actually where I'm letting this dry because I'm really not using a lot of water when it comes to this. Now, yes, I have color on the other side of my postcard, but again, it's handmade. Um, I'm okay with that. I mean, let's, let's talk honestly. If our recipient would say, hey, you got paint on the other side. Really? Come on. <laughs> Just the moment of honesty there. So I'm looking through the colors and I'm just, you know, paging to see, okay, where do I want to go now? I do want to focus in on those leaves. I have ink all over. <laughs> hand at this point. So that means it's fun. And again, where I'm getting it is my cloth because I picked up some of that color in there. What I did also enjoy with the postcard is once it was fully dry, it went flat. And you can see I'm not taping this down. Um, it's a good idea to it. It is a good practice to tape your piece down so that when it dries, it will snap back flat. Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm lazy. <laughs> I want to see what that's going to do. And if it, if it doesn't go flat, I can make it flat. I mean, I can flatten it out. 
let's say that other side where you have the paint that's just okay this is settle you know we have some of our concerns maybe that is going to drive somebody crazy you can take this panel and just place it onto a standard a2 size card base why not it doesn't have to be a postcard so many things you can do so i use the two shades of green that come in the pack light green and sap green to create those shadows and i just love that little bit of pop that's coming back um, I can see I didn't let that one area dry and what I'm doing I want to see if I can lift so I'm adding water to it I'm pushing my brush back and forth by the way that brush is from a Ranger paintbrush set which is they are wonderful brushes you can see how that's a palette and I can wipe it away and it cleans very nicely but I was able to take water brush that back and forth and lift off that green not completely but enough that it wasn't bothering me anymore um, and where I could say you know what I'm okay with that again watercolor piece they blend they merge together I love the palette from Altenew I just wipe it down again notice how I had a different <laughs> towel all right um, so what I want to do now is I want to show you what the colors look like now that we've worked on a project I flipped through the pages a, a bunch of times these are what the actual colors look like so first up is crimson the second is deep pink this third color is the vermilion our next color is dusk orange and I love the way that dusk orange is orange and then as it gets lighter it's got a shade of yellow to it the next color is chrome yellow gold ochre and then our next two are burnt umber and burnt sienna now your burnt umber and your gold ochre they look they look close i had a lot of water when it came to the burnt umber it is a little bit darker for the greens we've got light green and sap green and for our next two colors a beautiful viridian and peacock blue which to me is very close to um, ultramarine no that's not Persian blue is, I, is close to ultramarine for me and then we have violet and then our next two colors are magenta and the slate black so you can see this is how I usually do my color charts I'm dark on the one end and I stretch it out to see how that color looks on the light end these colors are beautiful they are so vibrant they are so pretty and they while they do dry back you don't lose much of the vibrancy we can take two colors and mix them together and that's what I'm going to show here so I took the Viridian and the peacock and those two colors will give us a beautiful aqua and you can see that color in between um, gives you you know that robin's egg blue if you make if you add more water to it or that tiffany blue color if we want to call it that we can get a beautiful coral by just mixing our red and our orange um, a beautiful vibrant coral and that's mixing together the deep pink and the vermilion um, you can get a beautiful shade um, with that as well so they do they mix beautifully um, you can see with everything that I did you can see how it went into that color palette um, or the pigment and even though it looks like it used a lot it didn't um, it will be a while before you can get into that so again this is what the package looks like I really love the portableness of it um, again this is great for all levels and if you are that creator that likes to be able to do things on the go um, this is something to check out um, I am not going to say that you have to purchase anything I will never do that but I like to be able to show you guys what things are um, you know how does this work what what possibility does this hold so I do hope if you had questions I hope I answered them for you um, I hope I showed you everything if you did have those questions of what you would look for um, when it comes to this you know could this be a possibility 
I will have a link down to um, their website. Now, this is the color pack that they have, but they also have different sets. So they have this color pack that comes with a watercolor. They have this color pack that we can get a neat cover for it. Again, if this is a gift that you're thinking that would be perfect for that person that you know that likes to do this on the go, they do have those types of sets. So again, that link will be down below so that you can do your research and read up on this product as well. If you have any questions, please leave those down below. And if I have the answer for it, maybe I just didn't make the statement, I will definitely respond to you as soon as I can. I hope everyone is having a great day. And if you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe. Be part of my group here. Make sure you ring the bell so that you know when the next video is live for you. I'm always getting caught up. I really don't have a schedule. But that's the fun in creating, right? Everyone. Remember what's most important for me. And there's a couple things now that I like to say. One, continue to stay safe and healthy. And two, always be creative, even if it's just for a little bit, every day. Till next time, guys. Take care.